Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We can finally take the wraps off the performance of the partner cards for the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 cards. The first card we're going to take a look at is this absolute behemoth. This is the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC and we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks to see how this ASUS card stacks up against the Founders card. But what doesn't stack up though is YouTube's unsub glitch. Now, we've had lots of people telling us every day that YouTube's been unsubbing them from the channel. So make sure you actually subscribe with those notifications turned on to see when we release new videos. And we release videos quite often, so hit that button. Okay, it's time to see how this thick boy right here stacks up against the Founders card in the Thick Boy Showdown. Let's get it. Now we've got no idea about availability or whether or not you'll actually be able to buy these cards at launch, but the launch date is right now. But as usual, I'll always stress this with new product launches and GPU launches and everything, it is gonna be subject to availability. Now, there's a lot of data to unpack with this video and if you wanna understand our testing methodology, there's a link to our 4090 Founders Edition review that explains every single thing that we do in detail. We wanna keep this video as short as possible just to make it hit a little bit harder. Now there's chapters in all of our videos as well, and you can jump to a certain section of any part of our video just by mousing over the progress bar or by clicking the timestamps in the description. Also, with saying that, make sure you watch this whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say here. And no, these videos are not sponsored by anyone in any way. I don't know where people get these ridiculous ideas from. I think that people just like make up their own stuff, but it's fake news. We're an independent testing outlet and we'll always be that way. No one can pay us any type of money to say what to do and tell us what to do and everything like that. No one can tell me what to, to say. I'll just do whatever I want. So as far as testing, these are also the out of the box figures only. We're not covering overclocking in this video, but if you want to see the DLSS 3.0 and ray tracing performance testing that we did, you can check out our Founders Edition review linked below. Let's get the benchmarks out of the way, not waste any more of your time. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our new GPU testing database. We used our new GPU test bench to give you guys accurate results based on the testing hardware from that new test bench. Now these results will vary from outlet to outlet because almost everyone has different testing methodology. I just thought I might add that in, but also keep in mind that all the drivers that are being used here are pre-release drivers. So there's bound to be some weird results with, you know, drivers and everything. It's like this at every launch guys, so just, Let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic pause button at any time during this video to take a look at these graphs for longer. Let's take a look at some results. The first thing you're probably noticing, even with this 1080p benchmark, is the 4090 is the fastest of the pack, and both of the 4090s here are like this. And it's even slightly faster than the Founders card by a single frame, but that's within a margin of error, so I wouldn't read into that too much. At 1440p, we're seeing the ASUS card falls behind the Founders card by only two FPS, but I'd still say that those two frames are within a margin of error. And this is probably to do with the silicon quality. And this is actually something I'll touch on a little bit later too. At 4K, we're seeing the same result again with the ASUS card falling exactly two frames behind the Founders card. Alrighty, let's move on to superposition. For these tests, we performed three tests in total. We use the 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. First up with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark. This one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the ASUS card be a single frame faster than the Founders Edition 4090. Not very interesting to be honest. At 1440p we see the inverse of that and the Founders card comes out on top by about 4 frames per second. And at 4K we see the Founders card come out on top again by approximately 6 frames per second. Let's move on to Cyberpunk 2077. Because FSR is supported by both Nvidia and AMD for all these GPUs, we tested this at high settings with FSR set to quality mode with no ray tracing to even out the playing field. Let's start off with 1080p. At 1080p, it turns out that the 4090 isn't much faster than the 3090 Ti. However, the ASUS card is faster than the Founders Edition card by a tiny amount. Notice that the AMD GPUs beat the Nvidia cards at 1080p. We've seen this behavior with AMD GPUs in Cyberpunk even with FSR disabled. So just 
Take that into account for your noggin. This could be a driver thing for now. However, at 1440p, the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 is faster than the Founders Card by about two frames per second. Once again, a 4K, we're seeing that the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC is faster than the Founders Card by about two frames per second. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux. However, we don't have Linux drivers yet, so you'll have to make sure you're subscribed to see all of our Linux testing. At 1080p, we're seeing the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC sitting behind the Founders Card by about six frames per second. At 1440p, we're seeing that gap between the Founders Edition and the Tough Gaming Card open up by about 10 frames per second. Remember, these numbers are quite large, so that 10 frames isn't really actually that much. And finally at 4K, we're seeing the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC come in just behind the Founders Card by approximately three frames per second. Lastly, we've got a new benchmark, Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a pretty popular title to benchmark with at the moment, but like Basemark, this exposes some big weaknesses with a lot of GPUs. At 1080p in Horizon Zero Dawn, the 6900 XT is the fastest of the batch, kind of like what we saw with Cyberpunk, and it's about 5% faster than both of the 4090s that we have on hand. We also saw this with Cyberpunk, however, as with those tests, the Delta isn't as large here at 1080p. But if we move on to 1440p, we're seeing the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC be about two frames per second slower than the Founders 4090. And lastly, at 4K, we're seeing both the ASUS and the Founders Edition cards pulling well ahead of the rest of the pack, with the Tough Gaming card being only one frame per second behind the Founders Edition card. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC above 64 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We also recorded all the memory temperatures here as well. We didn't see that rise above 66 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. So thermals here are actually quite good, but be aware, as I always say, this is an open air testing environment and the results in a closed system will be far different from what we observed. And we actually saw this with other outlets with their Founders Edition content testing inside a case with some cases just not being competent enough to handle a 4090, so just take that into account. As far as power consumption, we observed this hitting a board power draw, maxing out at around 446 watts at full load over that stress testing period of one hour. And this is about what I expect from this card. It's very, very close to the stock TGP of 450 watts quoted by Nvidia. We also observed the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC to be audible in our stress testing period with very slight coil whine, but you have to remember as well, as I mentioned, open air test system, guys. In a closed system, I'd debate that you probably won't be able to hear this card at all. And also remember, acoustic observations make way more sense than, you know, just a number on your screen about how loud something is because Acoustics are really tangible if something is sitting there and a number probably just doesn't make sense to you and you're probably wearing headphones, let's be real. The ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC is a behemoth of a card. It's a 3.65 slot card and it is much bigger than the Founders card. The length alone of the Tough card measures in at around 348 millimeters. Did I mention that this card's behemoth? What makes this different to the Founders card though is obviously the size. This absolutely dwarfs the Founders card, but the funniest thing is though, this tough card right here is nowhere near being the biggest 4090 on the market. The Tough Gaming card is a triple fan design with a very short PCB, meaning that if you decide to put a water block on this thing and water cool it, you're probably gonna have a fairly decent sized card. There's also RGB lighting on the card as well. Actually, here's a little known fact. The Founders cards also have RGB lighting as well. So yeah, there's just something to add to that. But what are my thoughts on the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC? Well, as with the Founders card, performance wise, it's almost identical to the Founders card with a slight difference that popped up in our testing. This card actually uses quite a bit less power than the Founders card that we have here. Our Founders card at full tilt pulled in around 
465 watts, whereas this tough gaming card only pulled in around 446 watts. Now that's actually enough for the results to be different, especially when we look at the worst case scenario. The truth is though, I found that the tough gaming card would pull less power than some of the benchmarks that we did with the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti. The argument here could be that the 4090 is more efficient, but it should be, it's a newer card. And that's usually the point of a new architecture. The major issue I have with the new 4090 cards is, is not just the price, right? They're just far too big. You can forget about building small form factor PCs with these 4090s, it's just not going to happen. Well, at least if you're going to not air cool them and water cool them, this is actually becoming a bit of a meme at this point because these cards are just way too big. And it's not just ASUS, every single manufacturer is guilty of this. And I mean, everyone is to blame here. Overall though, I gotta admit, like I said this in the Founders Edition review as well, I'm generally pretty impressed with the performance, but you're paying for every single frame and it's an expensive card. So you should be impressed with the 4K performance because the 4K performance is bonkers and it should be, especially for the mountain of a cache, you'll probably have to fork out for one of these ridiculous GPUs. So if you're interested in grabbing the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4090 OC, it's going for around 1,999 US dollars, or if I had to guess what it costs here in Australia, I'm gonna say somewhere between 3,500 and $4,000 at the time of filming this video. And these will be available now, assuming you'll actually be able to buy one because you know we, don't, we just don't know how it's, it's gonna be stock wise, but given how expensive it is, I don't think anyone's really gonna buy these cards. They're a really good flagship for Nvidia to sell because they're just ridiculously powerful and they'll basically do everything that you throw at them, but whether or not this card is for you, it's definitely not for you. The pricing is insane, but at the same time, no one's forcing you to buy anything. It's your money. If you hate your money, buy this card. If you love your money, hang on to it for a bit longer. At the end of the day, all we're doing is giving you numbers that we found with all of our testing and any decision when it comes to spending any money, remember, you don't have to buy anything. It's completely up to you. Yeah, it's your money. I can't make you do anything. But if I had to make you do something, I'd make you subscribe. So go ahead and do that right now and hit that subscribe button. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. Look at the size of this just quickly. All right, I've got the founder's card here. Hopefully I don't drop him. Look at the size difference between these two cards. Obviously there's gonna be B-roll in the video of these together, but my God, this is ridiculous. I mean, you can probably tell by the thumbnail how big this thing is. Thanks for watching.